Or no, we're just, we're just having a conversation. Yeah. And I'm going to sit a little forward so that we yeah. see you. Yeah. You know? Okay, just like that. You know, I, um, I've always admired you as a photographer. Thank you. I have to say this. Because of your process, I got to see a little bit of your rehearsal. And you were working with Stravinsky. Uh -huh. And I love Stravinsky. And you had the score. And you were making your choreographic notes into the mm -hmm. score. Which meant that you weren't going to waste any time. Right on I'm the trying line. not to. <laughs> Time is money, you know. And it's <laughs> nothing like, uh, yeah, like a good uh, deadline and uh, you know the pressure to get you going. So no, there's not much time to. Unfortunately, it's not. You know, people think it's the creative process is all this luxury of uh, you know of, of time and just wandering around until inspiration comes and all this. Um, you know, but most. You know, most artists, most you know, professional artists have deadlines and have you know, uh, <coughs> have to push themselves, you know, to to produce basically. And actually, you mentioned Stravinsky, so he's the best example of that. You know, when, <coughs> when he famously famously said that the more uh, the more um, limitation you give yourself, you know, the more structure, the more limitation, the more creative you can get. Which people think it's the other way. Everything is possible. Then you know you're extremely you know, uh, creative and productive, but actually, as as he, he showed us, the more you give yourself, you know, limitation deadlines and everything, the more you actually trigger the, the process and, and get creative. Well, you limit your choices and you make new tasks right. for yourself. Yeah. yeah. And what I found that most of, for me, most of what cre creativity is is problem solving. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly. And from the very beginning, the first problem is what am I going to do? Yes, and, how I, and who's going to pay for it? Yes. <laughs> well, that too, yeah. But uh, you know, I'm trying not to think about that too much. But uh, the first, yeah, the, the first problem is the blank page, the blank canvas, and to figure out what is the first stroke and, and where is that going to you know, take you. But you're absolutely right. I think it's a, it's a very good way to look at it. Um, it's problem solving. And in that way, it's uh, I always felt that it was close to science, it was close to architecture. Uh, to me, the same kind of process, you know, you've got issues, you've got things to solve, and what is the best way to solve that, you know, that problem or that issue, and then that's how you find your, you know, <coughs> your way, and the, the work just becomes, you know, um, yours, you know, and art. One of the things that I, I noticed, other than being extremely musical, but, but I saw you work with the score, I understood mm -hmm. why. Because you, it's not that you, you're uh, enslaved by the music, but you understand the music. Mm -hmm. And that gives you a place to work. Yes. And how it sounds and what it is, is usually two different things. Yeah, so what I'd like to say is, uh, yeah, so you know, being musical, extremely musical, as you say, I take that as a compliment. So it could be not taken as a compliment. Uh, Meaning it's not about mimicking the music, it's not going to you know, put a step, know your cons and know your music so you can put a step to every, you know, every note. Um, certainly, you know, when you do Stravinsky or if you do Bach, as I did, then you pick up the real problem if you try to put a step to each note, you know, and try to match those geniuses. Uh, what I like to think is that I'm trying to understand the music, understand what it's about, what they're trying to say, in a sense, you know, in the music. Um, and uh, and add to it, so it's, it's kind of a collaboration to me, and I, I mean it. And even with, uh, you know, it's wonderful when you collaborate with a live composer, and you can actually collaborate. But to me, it's not even essential because I feel like I collaborate with, you know, dead composer with with Stravinsky, with you know, Bach. Once I really try to understand what they're doing, I understand the score, the music, the, you know, where are they going structurally, where are they going color-wise and everything. Then I collaborate with that work to try to, uh, um, how do you say that, uh, to try to put light, you know, to it, to, to really so that people can, you know, so I uh, put that and then to add something to it so that it's, it's more than just a score else. You might as well go and listen to it in the concert hall, you know. So we need we need to, you know, the, I think the, the dance, the choreography manages to put 
a, a light into certain parts, certain pieces. You know, like I love to, for you know, an example is, you know, if there's a silence, I'm going to do movement. If there is a lot of music, I'm going to say silence. And those are ways to actually put for the audience focus into the music and what's going on. Um, and uh, I like to think that, because I was asked that question not long ago actually on tour, um, <clears throat> and I like to think that for me, I mean, I like to say that I, I see music moving and I hear dance. So, so to me, the, you, you know what I'm saying? It's yes, the yes. two same thing because when I hear music, I see movement. There's no doubt about it. I'm, I'm like, you know. And <clears throat> when I choreograph or when I dance, I hear music. I mean, the, the, the body makes music, but I tell my dancers that they have to make the music. I mean, they, the body sings, the body makes music. And then when I hear music, I see movement. So those two things for me are the same. What you're saying is absolutely true. I, I've watched, I watch a lot of choreography on video, and you can turn the sound off of the good choreography, right. and it still sings. Or you yes. can even play around with it. I've done it yeah. Yeah. in front of this piece of disco music or something else right. behind exactly. it. And because the choreography mm -hmm. has its own mm -hmm. musical signature, yeah. it works on anything. That's correct. Uh, this is interesting. An, an older gentleman, friend of mine, who is a huge um, fan of dance, um, used to say the same thing. That, you know, a good piece of choreography, you could, you can put another music to it, it still works. It still works. If it's not good, it doesn't work that way. Now, we, speaking of good choreography, yes. you have a season at the Joyce is coming yes. up really soon. Mm -hmm. And everybody needs to come out and see this season. If you haven't seen his work yet, you need to see it. Because, um, I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm being very honest. I, I've admired your work. It, the piece I'm talking about had a young child in it. We talked about it. Yeah, it's a firebird. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, I was right. I was right. You were right. Yes. And, and um, the way you used the score, your your own interpretation was brilliant. Mm -hmm. I can say this. I was I was so impressed because you've seen them before, and it's uh, kind of like a, yeah, an exercise in. Right. Those musics are you know I I've been known to choose music that first of all are you know big music, but also are music that we are created uh, for. Dance for dance, yes. You know, uh, you, you know, mentioned Firebird, but you know, I've done, you know, La Vasse or Maurice, Maurice Ravel, which a few yes. people know was a choreographic commission. Uh, Bolero was a co yeah. commission for, and of course, uh, Lino, oh, Lino, 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 yes. and, yeah, Lino, Lino. So I, I do a lot of those pieces. Um, it's wonderful but difficult because somebody's done it before you and sometimes many people have done it before you, like Firebird, you know, so you have to find your way, you have to find a way to say something new to that score and to that story. And that's why you said, you know, I just transformed the whole, you know, the, the whole thing. What interested me in that whole that Stravinsky <coughs> uh, journey I did, I did an entire pro program of four Stravinsky pieces, uh, was to see what uh, was at the essence of the piece. I and mean, I'm talking not the music here, but although the music, you know, as I said, was meant for the, you know, for the piece of choreography, therefore there was a story, I mean, there was a, you know, there, there was a, a libretto in a sense. Um, so I, I looked at that because I have respect for that, and I'm not gonna do anything to it, um, and try to find what is in the, at the essence of the story. So no, I'm not interested in having the ogre and the princess and the prince and you know. Um, nowadays it would not make sense and doesn't make sense in my you know psyche. Uh, but really, what is this about? What is this story about? You know, it's a rite of passage and it's a. So you know, I go there, I take that, and that from that essence, then I create something abstract, which which talks about those same times. So yes, my firebird was not a beautiful. Um, Beautiful ballerina kicking the back of her head, as we know her. Uh, she was a little, you know, nine years old girl. Um, uh, but but what she was representing was exactly to me the, the same as what the original the magic of it. To me, it was the magic of a child and its its power of, of uh, creativity uh, and innocence um, was what she was passing on to those people, which is exactly the same thing that the firebird does. Uh, so you know, that's the way I like I like to work. Um, this season, of course, is, is... Hold on one second. I 
I'll do it. I'll do it. Yes, it seems like that. And then that was right on. I should have turned it off. I'm so, I'm so sorry. It's a good deal, yeah. It's, it's for my season. It's very good. Yeah, this scares you. In New York season. That fits really well with my uh, <coughs> wisdom. Let me do two things. I'm going to stop this.